Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're reviewing the Lexus RC350. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Larch Miller Lexus here in Murray, Utah, for giving me some time with this RC. This one is available for sale for the time being, so if you're interested, I'll include a link to their website in the description down below. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below as well. Let's get into it. Powering this is a naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6 that goes through a 6 speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 19 around town and then 26 on the highway with power outputs being 311 horsepower and then 280 pound feet of torque. Now before we go over the front end, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood, the design is pretty simplistic, just a couple body lines on either side but I do love this color, I think it's called Incognito, we'll check the window sticker at the end. Coming down below, I love the look of the new style of daytime running lights with the headlights, and then you guys can see the little trim piece here off the side. It's kind of hard with the lighting today, to be honest. But anyways, here is the grill. It's Lexus's signature grill, which I think works very well with the proportions of this car. And putting it all together, let me know what you guys think about the front end on this RC. Coming on the side here, time wheel setup is 235, 40, 19 in the front and over in the rear. And when it comes to the overall coloration of the wheels, I do like the metallic gray. I think that looks quite nice. Now I love the fender here and then also that body line. That comes together for a really cool look. Anyways, you've got your F-Sport badge here on the side, blacked out mirror caps at least at the top. And by the way, these are the same mirrors that are on the LC500, so that's a cool little fact. And then you've got your door handle, which I think also looks cool. And here is your full side view on the RC. Again, the body lines and everything, it's, it's a really beautiful design. So here's a quick look at our key fob. We have our unlock function, our lock function, the opening here for the trunk, and then the Lexus logo there on the back, and pop her open. Now popping into the storage area here for the RC, you guys can see that it is actually quite spacious. That's one of the big benefits of this fun two-door car is that it's still really practical. And of course, when you're all done, just plop that down. Uh, now, no spoiler or anything like that on the back. They just keep it clean. You've got your Lexus logo here, and then the newer style of taillights, which also have a really sharp appearance to them. And then you guys can see here with more of the venting there and then parking sensors as well. Wrapping things up, let me know what you guys think about the overall design. I think it looks cool, especially again in this incognito color. It works really well with the car. Now taking a look at the front door panel, you guys can see here, soft touch at the top, and then look at the red stitching down below, and then the red trim below that. That is all a really cool look of the design. And then you get your window controls here, we've got your mirror adjustments, memory seats, and then we do have blind spot monitoring with the mirrors. Now if I pull this latch right here, that'll push the seat forward and then it'll automatically kind of whir forward. And this will give me access to the back seats here in the RC. So. You guys can see that legroom is pretty limited back there. Um, headroom's actually decent. Um, I know you guys probably want me to stuff myself back there, but I've, I've gotten back in RCs before. Anyways, at least they give you really nice seats, but I will say I would reserve the uh, back seat area in the RC, sorry about the camera freaking out. Anyways, as I was saying, I would reserve it uh, for little ones. I think that's kind of what it's made for. And just gotta do that and the seat will go back into place. You guys can see here with the headrest and then notice how it's perforated all down the center. You got your power adjustments. Lexus logo right there. And then we actually have really nice looking pedals down below. And then we have a bunch of controls here. So open up the trunk, you've got your hood latch, you've got this for the parking sensors, you guys can see for the blind spot monitoring, and then the steering wheel itself is power adjustable. So here's a quick look at the steering wheel. You guys can see perforated here on the sides and get a slightly better grip. You get your F Sports badge there at the bottom. We also have our cruise control stock here in the rear. Paddle shifters here in the back for the six speed automatic. And then we got practical controls for like your cruise control, lane departure, some stuff for the center stack, voice command controls, volume controls, you know, all that normal stuff. And then we have our turn signal light stock and then our windshield wiper stock. So here is the center gauge cluster. Now it's like part analog, part digital. It does the cool moving to the side thing. I think we're just gonna remember how cool this gauge cluster was in the future. Anyways, got like your eco mode, but the cool thing is the sport and then the sport plus mode, how it gets all red and aggressive. That adds to the fun. Now here's our backup camera. We do have trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel and overall resolution is pretty solid. Now as for the rest of the infotainment system, uh, first off, this is a touchscreen, but it also has the trackpad. So you can do touchscreen or trackpad, whichever one you like most. Um, I will say the trackpad 
it does take a second to get used to, but you know, having the touchscreen functionality added into it makes this really user friendly. Look at this trim here on the dash. It is also soft touch on the whole dash for those of you that are wondering. Got like nice red stitching there. And then you guys can see here with the vents and the clock. And we have our climate controls. This has the cool like slider climate control setup, which is definitely fun. And then analog controls here for the radio as well. Now this does have heated and ventilated seats as well as a heated steering wheel. You can see in that whole section right there. And then we have our shifter here for the six speed automatic drive mode select. We also have our snow mode, stability control, auto hold. And then here's that keypad to control the infotainment system if you don't want to use the touch screen. Some cup holder action. And then we got the center console here, which has some USBs. Overall good storage. I do like the padding here on the top, that's nice. And then you got the glove box, which yeah, pretty good storage in there. And then up top we got our controls here for the center. And this is interesting, look, boom. So it's like two separate things. I don't know why this is a thing, but it's a thing. So here's our window sticker for this RC. You guys can see all the standard equipment. Base MSRP 53,595. We do have some options. Total MSRP on this is $61,230. And let's see how it drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's visibility over the hood. Both the mirrors just do a blind spot monitoring. Let's the rest of the rear. And, well, let us set off in the RC. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens to the RC in the coming years. My guess is when Lexus redoes this, it's probably going to get the same turbo four-cylinder that all of the other Lexuses, Lexi, or whatever the plural is, are getting. Uh, so the 2.4, which, I mean, that engines already with uh, SUVs that have all-wheel drive. So they literally just throw that powertrain and that all-wheel drive system in this car and boom, you've got an RC. And honestly, although I love the sound of the V6, I would not complain if that's the route that they do because that turbo four cylinder has so much more like torque than this. And on top of that, the eight speed's just a more modern responsive transmission. Uh, and so I don't think that that would be a bad thing uh, to go for. We'll talk about that more at the end of the driving. But anyways, just like other Lexus cars, suspension is incredibly smooth. Um, that's one of the things that I really like about Lexus over some of the German rivals when it comes to sports coupes and sports sedans is just how comfortable this car is. And you guys can see that the handling is really good too. Um, steering is, is lighter, but like handling, it's, it's sharp. But yeah, it's so comfortable. Like between the seats and the suspension of this car, it's super daily drivable. Like this is not a car that, like sometimes you get out of the sports coupes and sports sedans and you're like, ah, oh, thank goodness. And you're like, I, I don't want to drive this for a minute. Whereas this car, you could daily drive, put hundreds of thousands of miles on it and it's it's fine. It's super great that way. Um, some other stuff, I do actually like the overall response to the engine, at least on the low end. It's got, a, it's got enough torque that it gets up and moves. It has a nice sound to it as well. But of course, the exciting thing is Sport Plus where the gauge cluster gets all red and aggressive. And I guess we'll see how this six speed automatic performs. Okay, so let's see the suspension over the train tracks here. Yeah, damping is so good on this. Woo! <laughs> it's got good power, but yeah, the transmission holds this back quite a bit. And I think what really shows that is if you ever have a chance, drive a V6 Camry, because that has an eight speed automatic. So like, <laughs> and it's it's got the same v6 and, and you can like really see like having a more modern transmission helps out quite a bit let's see what the manual modes like it's not the worst it's definitely slower to respond though that is for sure i feel like this is more of like a comfortable luxury cruiser than it is a sport vehicle if you want like a sporter drive then you know that's what the lc 500 is for and that's what you know the rcf was for and you know the new is 500 that's what that one is all about so to sum things up i think this is a beautiful car on the outside i think the build quality is great i think that it sounds really good i think it drives really well uh, i do think the transmission holds this car back substantially and on top of that you know this might be sacrilege to some of you, but I wouldn't mind the turbo four cylinder in this, honestly. Because like with this version of the RC, I mean, it's a V6 at the end of the day. Like it sounds great, but it's not a V8. So like, I'm not as 
destroyed if they go from a six cylinder to a four cylinder. Like if I get more power, better fuel economy and a more responsive transmission, I'm okay with it. Now, if they replace the V8 with something, then that's sacrilege. Okay, that's that's where things, that's where I draw the line because the V8 is, is the cool thing. Um, but at the same time, if they put the twin turbo 3.5 V6 in one of these, uh, that'd be kind of cool. Wouldn't sound as good as the V8 though. Wouldn't sound as good. So overall, I think the RC, like I said, great car overall. I just think that it would be best if they updated the transmission and I would not complain if they changed the engine.